don't send me any more petitions to secede, it is just about as dumb as the damn Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. I think so. I think it is. But not for the reasons you're saying. You, you're saying America's not the problem. It's the people in it who are the problem. Well, come on, man. Uh, uh, Amer that's, that's what America is. It's just a bunch of people. It's just a bunch of people who believe that there is this thing out there called government that they can uh, affect in some way. That they can, by voting for a uh, – by selecting a candidate from a pool uh, of candidates that, that are presented to them by – the legislators that are in office now, by the parties who already control everything, the Democrat and the Republican Party, they, 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 they're the ones who give you the, uh, the, the options. They're the ones who give you the candidates from which you select. But they're also the ones who uh, control the systems. They're, they're the ones who, who own <laughs> and control the, the election commissions. They're the ones who hold all the offices in, that are available. In the in the in the structures, state and federal, all of it. Um. So yeah, the people are the problem. No, the people are not the problem. Government, Tmot, is the problem. As long as there is some entity that can be used by some people to force other people to do something, that entity will be used. And who's going to use it? Tmot, it's going to be the people who are most capable of using it. And who is that? Well, the ones with the influence. And who is that? The ones with more money than everybody else. Okay, this is starting to sound like Occupy Wall Street, right? Well, that's the way it really is, you see. Everyone acts in his own self-interest. There is no action taken by any human, and I don't mean reflexive involuntary action like blinking your eyes or turning in your sleep or your blood flowing or your heart pumping or any of that. I mean the actions that you uh, undertook intentionally. All of those. All of them. Every single one of them is undertaken because the person who acts believes that the action will result in a state of affairs that he prefers. This is true for everyone. It's true for you, me, uh, all the masses of people in the world, everybody who's ever lived and ever will live, including um, the Associated Press, Reuters, everybody, the owner of any media outlet, um, you, uh, I, Barack Obama, Mitt Romney. Now, to assume that pe uh, people will not use this capacity to act and whatever power they may have to arrive at a state of affairs that they prefer is foolishness, okay? So the way, that, the way government, uh, the, this democratic system, and, and you, you could believe all you want that it's a republic and it's actually ruled by law, well, you're, you're delusional if you think that. This is a democracy... And the candidates who, who take office, take office because they win some election, okay? And then what they do is, well, it's up to them when they're in there. And it, 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 there, is, there are uh, laws that tell them what they are and are not allowed to do. There's the Constitution that is supposed to restrain government. Each state has its Constitution. The federal government has its Constitution. And... It, there, in that constitution, it, it tells them what they may do for the federal government, right? And so they're supposed to interpret this. Here's how they're supposed to interpret it. There, there is a, a principle underlying all law, all legislative law, all law that is made by man. This is that the burden of proof is on the accuser. So since the burden of proof is on the accuser, any law the federal government makes, if they want to enforce the law, they need to then show that the law is law de jour. That means that they had a right to make it. Okay, You can't show that a law is law de jour by pointing to some ambiguous uh, uh, enumeration of power in, the, in, the, uh, in Article 1 and saying, well, it could be interpreted to say that we have the power to write this law. 
See, that's not conclusive. That doesn't that doesn't shoulder the burden of proof that they need to shoulder. Now, we, what, what do we do about this? We all ignore it. We all just say, well, whatever SCOTUS says, whatever the Supreme Court says, uh, that's that's uh, that's the decision. Well, uh, the Supreme Court is uh, a member of the same damn government who made the law. They're complicit in the crime. And you're looking to them to, the, to decide whether or not something obeys the Constitution. And again, what happens to the legislators if they violate the Constitution? Are they punished? They're not punished. They may or may not be voted out of office uh, next time you have an opportunity to vote. Okay? This is not a system that is ruled by law. You understand? This is a system that is ruled by force. They have the burden of proof, and then when they can't shoulder that burden of proof, they move along as if they have, as if what they're doing is legal, and they will force you to obey whatever laws they write. The, the, really? The people aren't the problem? The government's not the problem? The parties are the problem? No, T-Mot. The government is the problem. Damn it. The system itself is the problem. And you know what? This is a problem that's inherent in, in any de democratic system you can imagine. You can't imagine a system that can't be taken and controlled by those with the most power. And when they act, they're not acting in the best interest of the people as a whole. Again, remember, everyone acts in the best interest of himself. Everyone acts, only ever acts, to bring about a state of affairs that he prefers. If they happen to act in a way that is consistent with the best interests of the people as a whole, it's only by happenstance. No, government is the problem. And the people are only the problem in the sense that they believe that government is necessary. It's not actually true that government is necessary. And, and this can be shown uh, pretty easily by looking at what people tend to prefer uh, order. They prefer order, they prefer, they prefer structure, and they uh, respect institutions. Okay? Why does a, why do a, a, a group of, of soldiers, why does an army obey its commander? It, it's not because they fear death at the hands of their commanders. It has something to do with honor. It may have something to do with a common interest, but that is actually shown that it doesn't have to be the case. Look at Nazi Germany, what they did. Um, look at the Stanley Milgram experiments. People will obey authority, and that's because they respect institutions. Now, the fact that people have this respect for institutions goes to show that they will respect whatever institutions are in place even if those institutions do not have a monopoly on the initiation of force they respect institutions on the Stanley Milgram uh, uh, studies the people they obeyed the scientists even though there was no I there was no understanding that the scientists had any power to make them do anything they, when he told them, okay, now jack it up to 450 volts and shock that person, they said, oh, I don't know. He said, please continue. They said, uh, it, it was about um, 70 or so percent of them that went along and obeyed him. Okay. Th this, is, this is proof that government is not necessary, that some entity with the uh, uh, monopoly on the initiation of force is not required. People will carry, carry on and go about their lives in an orderly and structured fashion for the most part with or without government. Those who want to b break the law, those who uh, uh, have no empathy, the psychopaths, they will do what they will do with or without government. Okay. So, no, government is not necessary, and th this federal government that has obviously violated its part of the whatever agreement it thinks it has with us, um, it's not necessary. 
The states can go on living their lives. The st people in the states can go on getting along with one another. We can continue to trade with one another. We can continue to trade with the rest of the world with or without this uber government that is over and above all of us. Okay? You don't have to identify as an American. You do that because there is... Well, again, we, we respect institutions, but it, there's also the factor that um, we're we're affected by righteous indignation that some people feel they have when they call out someone who seems to be anti-American, some American who seems to be talking uh, nonsense against America. So you're 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 browbeaten by this patriotism. And, and there's, there's nothing wrong inherently necessarily with patriotism, qua patriotism, but look what it can lead to. Let your imagination run wild for a minute and think about history and, and think about what patriotism, patriotism can lead to. Um, it, it, it's not, it's not a virtue in and of itself. So whatever. All that to say that no, America's not the problem, the people are problem. Uh, that's foolish, T Mott. You should never have said that. That's a stupid thing to say. America's not the problem, or I'm sorry, government's not the problem. The parties are the problem. Well, given government, the parties are inevitable. So that's not exactly a stupid thing to say, but it, it's it's not correct. The parties are a problem, but they are an in, they are an inevitable result of the, the structure we have, the the democratic structure we have so is secession uh, let me let me comment on this secession sh thing for a second is secession as foolish as as the occupy wall street movement well you know it, it, the what they're doing the, these petitions where some somebody uh, uh writes a petition and then starts trying to gather signatures for it on the behalf of his state that's silly you're right that's as stupid as occupy wall street and, and for several reasons. First, it hasn't been demonstrated that the state wants to secede. Um, we only know that some people, for example, in, in, the, in the, uh, the example of, of which one was it? Uh, Louisiana, right? It, it, some doctor uh, wrote a petition and so far it has something like 15 or 16,000 signatures. And that's not all the people in um, Louisiana. It's not a, it, it doesn't even come close to being a majority. It's not anybody in their government not that i personally would give that any more credence than than a, a a movement consisting of most of the people um so for that reason it's it's kind of silly it, it, it hasn't been shown that the state itself even wants to secede but uh, the other problem with it is they are petitioning the federal government to allow them to peacefully succeed succeed i look now i'm saying it the way you do it secede i I haven't talked about this a lot, so I didn't really know how it should be pronounced till recently. But anyway, it's secede, S-E-C, um, uh, E-D-E, I think, something like that. Uh, <laughs> you write a petition begging your your uh, your government god to allow you to peacefully allow you to secede, as if they had the power. As if their power wasn't derived from you. You don't write a, a, a petition and petition. You don't beg the federal government to allow you to secede. You inform them that you have seceded and the matter is over. If they want to initiate force against you for that, well, that, 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 that'll probably happen. That's what happened last time. Um, so... Yes, the federal government will violently enforce its its will. It will violently impose its will on anybody who wants to question its uh, ad hoc de facto power. <laughs>